believe we will be the first to game on a development kit. Words cannot express how excited I am right now. I've completely sequestered myself. I haven't looked at any other coverage. I haven't looked at any pictures and I have not yet opened this box. But inside here is an Xbox Series X. Totally normal, except for the fact that it has 40 gigabytes of RAM, extra buttons on the front, an OLED display, and it looks absolutely nothing like the Xbox on the shelf at Best Buy. That's because this Xbox, it's not for playing games, it's for developing them. And because these dev kits, as they're called, are the property of Microsoft, very few of them make it out into the wild. Uh, Microsoft, by the way, I know this is technically stolen property. Um, we good? Just give me a call. I'll have it back to you right away, but I do need to play with it for a little bit first. <laughs> and play, I actually may. Now, Gamers Nexus recently also got their hands on a Series X dev kit, but they weren't able to actually run any software on it. As for ours, we believe it may still be in working order, but all of this raises quite a few questions. Why do these kits exist? How the heck has everyone been getting their hands on these lately? Why does it look so different? And of course, who is today's sponsor? Humble Bundle. That's right, we're partnering with Humble Bundle to support Life Lights and the BC Children's Hospital with their handheld PC power bundle of eight Steam Deck verified games. Learn more at the end of this video or by using the link down below. Either my left arm is way weaker, this thing is way heavier than the actual finished product. It has 10 gig ethernet? What the f is going on right now? Okay, we need to get this going here. I know absolutely nothing about this other than that it's a dev kit and dev kits are a thing. I can't believe it has a 10 gig network port. Why is it labeled debug? I guess if they wanted to know what the actual hardware capabilities are, when downloading files at like future network speeds or something like that. Based on the history of this device that we got from our seller, we're pretty sure that aside from them and our logistics team who had to inventory this bad boy, we're the first ones to really unpack everything and power this thing on. A small studio went under and a few of these special development kits ended up sitting in a warehouse somewhere. They got access, picked one up, posted it to Reddit and the rest is history. We ended up paying somewhere in the neighborhood of around 2,000 US dollars. Thank you very much, seller, who posted a price and then turned it into a bidding war. We're very happy we have it because opportunities to get your hands on a codename Scarlet Development Kit are not going to come around very often. I mean, outside of developers, nobody should ever see this. And yet, here we are. These are features that most people really wouldn't need. They don't give them too much information. I mean, the last thing you want is the exact details leaking, and I guarantee you that part of the legal agreement you have to sign to get one of these says you do not open it up. Stack up to five XDKs vertically. Yeah, for them, that would be a pretty big deal, I guess. You know, you gotta pack in your play testers. Why else would I need to stack Xboxes? Tell me, come on, that's, that's, sit, come, 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 come. That's pretty come. much it. One QA person might have something like four Xbox, four kits at their desk, right. and they're gonna stack them to save space. Yeah. And then on top of that, you're gonna have racks that are running automation and stuff like that. Oh. And usually you can get away with having each one on an individual rack, that's right. the ideal, but sometimes you stack them up a little bit. Out of something like this. Lots of stuff. Um, I put it all in the script, but. <laughs> <laughs> Plausible deniability right here. It's, I don't actually know what the buttons do. I know what the buttons But here's my concept They of can what, be programmed. They can they be can programmed. They can be programmed, so they can do whatever you want. You would show something like animation states, okay. nav mesh that's on the ground so that you can see like, oh, oh there's a level here. There's a hole that they could fall but through. But there's a or hole so. they could fall through. Or look, why aren't the enemies moving around? Oh, there's no nav mesh. Buttons. Oh, so cool. So you can turn on nav mesh so that you can Cheat see. Cheat buttons! Kind of. These are probably more like turn on FPS, turn, sure. turn on Geo, turn okay. on like stuff like that, yeah. So you want like a quick store button, you can be like press number five and it'll take you to the store. It's whatever the programmers want to do, right? right. So, and then give the, the tools to QA so that they can QA faster. Okay. Programmable OLED display, and I can see right here, it's yeah. showing SSD speed and FPS. Man, especially now that we know that Xbox is more of an ecosystem and less of an individual device and they intend for games to run on multiple tiers of the hardware. Like if I wanted to upsell better Xboxes 
Enable frickin' FPS counters, you buttheads. <laughs> why do I have to explain why this is a good idea? Front-facing USB 3.1 Gen 1, so you can just connect all the controllers with, yeah. with a wire. Yeah. So Microsoft knows it's convenient. They just don't care. What that tells you is that the SOC has this functionality. It is definitely in there. They did not re-spin it and remove USB-C from it. So it's got a total of six USB ports, four Type-A, two Type-C, and Microsoft removed them. It has a higher yeah. speed development SSD? It's like, it's, the, it's some of the coolest stuff, whether you're Sony or you're Microsoft or whatever, it's some of the coolest stuff they make because it's, it, it's the cutting edge. Okay, look at yeah. this giant foot. I know. That's not a, that's not a foot, that's and a see whole the freaking... So you can stack them, no problem. Like all this fan here oh, and all the vents are on the side. Oh, we actually sense. had a retail kit like Catch Fire at one point because it was stacked. Because the old Xboxes, they had the vents on the top, right? right. On the one side. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Ooh, let's nice talk peel. about unoptimized builds. That would be why it has 40 gigs of GDDR6 memory then, right? Pretty, pretty much, but this one's a little out of the ordinary because normally, so for example, with Scorpio, yeah. um, the dev kit had double the memory, 12 gig kit, and then the Scorpio had 24. Yeah. So they just doubled it. With this, uh, Series X is 16 gigs of RAM. So, so they, they more than doubled it. More than doubled yeah. it. Yeah, it went from 32 to 40. So they've added a whole eight, eight extra gigs of RAM. No, I'm just gonna open the shell. I'll be okay, good. Okay, yeah, just be careful with the thermal pads. I'll be there. good, I'll They're be not, a good boy. It's not even pads. Good boy, like, uh, it's, uh, Good boy. They do give these to development companies, but you can only get like two of them for free or for cheap. It's They rent it to you for like a hundred bucks or something oh. like that. Any more kits than that, and you will usually have to pay a price. Oh. Um, I can't speak to how much this one will cost or what Xbox is doing now, but yeah. like, for example, when I was at EA, we had a giant stack of boxes of PS4 dev kits, and they're like, yeah, those are like 2,500 bucks a pop. So a lot of people are actually using the retail kits for testing a lot of the time. Right because they're so expensive comparatively. Got and it. you mostly just need these guys for like tool development, sure. uh, engine development and optimization and stuff that you'd look at before the game comes out or right. whatever, before the console launches, right? You heard it here first. I fix it, repairability score, <laughs> very low, lots of adhesive. <laughs> now hold on a second. Let's say I declare myself to be a game development studio. I hired a game developer guy or something. I'm gonna make a game, so what? Microsoft will just send me two of these? You have to apply and become part of the program. Uh, it's called the Game Developer Program or something uh -huh. like that, part of Microsoft. Got it, so, so they have to say, yes, we actually... Yeah, you have to like pitch in the game and be like, okay, here's our game. Can we, we, we wanna make it for Xbox as well. Can we please have a development kit or two? And they'll typically send it to you. I thought you are just gonna play <laughs> games on it. How long have you worked here? <laughs> It's okay, David, if it breaks, it's just the plastic part. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, the ports are still there. Yeah. Relax, buddy. It's fine. <laughs> cool. So that's interesting. These are very, very not meant to be removed. You can see they're actually melted into place. Yeah. Fantastic. They don't expect engineers to like tear these down or anything. If there's any kind of like major architecture overhaul oh. for it, then they'll try to figure out how to run their games on the, on the new architecture. But luckily they're all pretty much computers now, so it's a lot easier. Like PS3 was notably really a pain in the ass to develop for. All right, we might have to go a little deeper. Oh, okay. It's probably more of the same kind of plastic clips. Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is- They're really not meant to be taken apart. This is one time yeah. assembly, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? This is as far as I want to go before at least trying to power this thing up because okay. I can see that there's some strain on these front USB ports here as I'm trying to tilt this up and it's very clear that this thing is just melted plastic riveted together. I was pressing this button right here and just like, oh no, it's not doing anything because I thought the PCB was mounted behind it, but the PCB is actually here, so I had to press the switch here. Wait, so ours works. So ours should work. So that's the thing is basically everything, it needs internet. We can play games, theoretically. We should be able to pop a game in and it should be like, yeah, sure, you can play it because you're just signed, like you're not signed in or whatever. Whoa, whoa, what did you just do? Did you do cheat codes? Kind of, you press, you can do this on a retail Xbox as well, but basically you hit LBRB LTRT really quick. Yeah. And it brings up a developer settings tab. Normally what you need to do to get more development stuff is there's an actual like Xbox developer XDK app that you go and you install. It's called like DevKit or something. Right. And you look it up in the Play Store and you install it. We can't do that. 
yeah. for obvious reasons. But every Xbox can do this, where you just bring up this little extra hidden menu, uh -huh. um, and then you can pop it into developer mode, uh, console will restart after that. But while you're here, you can get a bunch of stuff. So it tells you what your sandbox ID is. Uh -huh. It gives you like your console IP, your tools IP, uh, kernel version, OS right, version, all that, that shit that you can see, yeah. The main thing that we use the sandboxes for is for different development environments when you're testing a game. Okay. So, for example, retail is just retail. This is, if we were in retail sandbox, we would be right. pointing to every other kit that's on the market right now. It would be part of Xbox Live and all that. There's normally like three or four of these at least, and everyone's testing different stuff in each environment. Right. So it could be in like very early production where you're just testing, can we even get this function to work? Yeah. Then it's gonna go to bug testing, then yeah. it might go to yeah. optimization, yeah. and that's what you're talking about. Kind of, yeah. So like all the QA is probably on like test and then once you're ready to go to uh, production, like before you push out an update, yeah. you test everything on basically what's a copy of retail. Flipplane calls it pre-prod. So. Sure, yeah, we call, yeah, but exactly. That's that's all it is. Your yeah. your different staging environment. It has to be staged in in multiple data centers. Microsoft has to pay for that bandwidth. I mean, we've seen events yeah. like major game launches where internet traffic as a whole has gone. Yeah. I mean, Microsoft can even do it with a Windows update, and nobody even wants to download those. <laughs> Boom, roasted. <laughs> what it's okay. usually looking for is when you've got it not connected to a whitelisted network. Right. And we would have ports at our desks that are like, this is the port you connect everything to. It touch nothing this, else. This is your like random PC port that's for everything else, basically. Okay. Look at that. Yeah. Internal storage, development SSD, clear local Xbox 360 storage. Is that a thing on the regular Xbox? That's like separate storage for Xbox 360? This is all probably standard. One thing you can get for free and just that's available to the public is the regular XDK, but that only lets you make PC games or for PC Game Pass. It doesn't let you do any actual Xbox stuff. That's all under NDA. Yeah, I'm not gonna check the <laughs> network, don't you worry. It probably wouldn't do anything here, but yeah, if we plugged in, I'm sure it would be like, no, this is not recognized as a whitelisted account or whatever. Okay. So throw in Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Oh, something went wrong. Whoa, hold on a second. These error codes are probably in, like, on Microsoft's website. Insert first disk. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh this is fine then. Is this, this is... the eject? How do I eject? Uh, the little button on the side there. I was trying to figure out, oh, could we use the 10 gig to speed up this download? Maybe we should. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, right, it's a disk. Right, we're going off a disk. <laughs> okay, I'll just, I'll just be patient. <laughs> Don't, please God, don't plug in the f***ing tanky. I'm having so much fun right now. So they're on 3542, mm -hmm. uh, so this is pretty old comparatively. This probably showed up in that developer's studio in like early 2020, late 2019. Possibly, yeah. Oh, date, December 12th, 2019. So that's, that's the last time it synced. Those who know, <laughs> they know. <laughs> Right. It's fine, we're not connected to anything. I just, I keep, I keep freaking out right now. Okay, if we don't enter the, the password, it's fine. It's irrational, it's totally irrational. This thing has no way of talking to a Microsoft server. That we know. <laughs> you know, when's the last time you sat down in front of a computer that didn't have an internet connection and we're like, oh, I'm gonna yeah. use this computer. Oh, and sucks. you realize you can do absolutely nothing on a modern computer without an internet connection. Unless you're lucky and you've got Steam already launched and you click go offline yeah. or whatever. Like, like and play some solitaire? Yeah, pretty much. They don't even have Space Cadet Open anymore. Open up Notepad? Yeah, and be like, here's my cool Xbox. I can't do this for anything. <laughs> People come over, you say, hey, you want to see my dev kit? <laughs> you bring them to the room and you're like, there's the dev kit. Well, look, maybe if I was still single and I really needed to impress the chicks. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's like, the yeah, that's the ticket. I've got. <laughs> hey, you want to see my Project Scarlet? <laughs> Outside of a game development studio, I believe we will be the first to game on a development kit. The PS1 dev kits were like SGI machines. Like you would make the game not even on a computer. It was like on, on a, a workstation. on a workstation, and then import it to the PlayStation. Which Just yeah, making sure people know that that you know. stuff costs tens of thousands. Even the old consoles, like Xbox, gives these away kind of to dev kits, right? But or to developers. But even as far back as like PS3s, like I said, they were like twenty five hundred dollars per right. kit. And if you're with sixty dudes downstairs playing just all day, that's sixty Xboxes. 
per, right. you know, <laughs> like you can't, pretty fast. that's a lot of money. I've seen everyone set up stuff wrong. Can't Cause then you just install. don't even have the hassle of like, oh, I accidentally plugged it Correct. into the wrong port and yeah. freaking exactly. bricked it. Exactly. Great. Yeah. And so, yeah. He's it was, not seen anything. This is all I, speculation. Yeah, I haven't seen anyone Allegedly. ever do anything wrong at a game development studio. Yeah, Everything goes keep, perfectly smoothly. Yeah, we're trying to keep you your, your butt covered, okay? <laughs> And yes. we're trying to keep the rest of them covered. We got the hey, stealth hoodie from LTT Store. We got the dad wow. hat. We got matching hats today. Hey. Hey. hey! Go check out LTT Store. We got lots of new colors of water bottles. They're freaking amazing. And I believe party shirts are back in stock, unless they're Ooh. gone by the time this video goes up. You know what? I'll let you do the honors of playing on a dev kit wow. for the first time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> He's not even excited about it. I want a game on it. <laughs> okay. Ploof is back from Willow Video. Shout out Willow Video. Those guys are awesome. And the first one I'm gonna try is Dirt 5. All of these are either launch titles or they're Xbox 360 titles with backwards compatibility. That's the same error, isn't it? This one is a different error code than what I got before, but it's a lot of like incompatibility or it may be due to a network or service issue. How much money did I just waste on Xbox games? Like a hundred bucks. Oh. It's not that bad. What do you mean it's not that bad? hundred bucks, a hundred bucks. Okay, here, how, can I have a hundred bucks? I mean, I don't have cash on me. You want me to eat transview $100? Excuses. <laughs> so there's one thing that we can try. Oh. This is kind of a oh. wrench in the plans. There is an offline- A good wrench? Maybe, there's an offline system update. Hold on, there's specific instructions on how to do this. Oh, full shutdown. Yeah, full shutdown. Okay. This is- Is this something you know from your development days or like, is this just crazy? No, I just started Googling if you could do an offline system update and like, turns out you can. I don't expect this to work. Yeah, right, because this isn't even the same hardware. Yeah. So, but we might as well give it a shot. Wait 30 seconds and then plug the main leads back in. Oh, that's to like kill the power for sure. It doesn't sure. need 30 seconds. No, seconds but like. Yes, here, if we just try and start it, let me just try to power it on. Oh, sure, yeah, that should like cycle any juice that's in there. Yeah. You got, you got it? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Press and hold the pair button located on the left side of the console. Is there even a pair button? Yeah, that looks like the pair button. And the eject button located on the front of the console. Uh, well, the locations are not gonna help me, sir. I know. This is a different console, <laughs> sir. Sir? And then press the Xbox button okay. on, on the console, so then... Okay, go so for you've it. got those? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Da -da -da. Continue holding, Continue parent, holding eject parent eject for 10 to 10 15. 15. It made a different noise this time, so I think it's doing it. Probably doesn't need any more. Oh, hi. Troubleshoot, cool. Oh, so, buddy. So? Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, only the D-pad works. That's interesting. It's probably just like a really low, like a safe mode kind of thing. Wait, no, step one, down like... Shut up. Okay, wait. Downloading oh, oh. from the, nothing's plugged oh, okay. in, nothing's hooked up. Okay, what I was actually freaking out about was I thought it was like, yes, this will work. But if it hasn't downloaded the file, it can't do a checksum yet, so it might not, it might yeah. be thinking, uh, maybe it downloads freaking any file with that extension yeah. and then it'll check it after. Yeah. But it's not connected to any network, so like, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. We made it 100% of the way through verifying without it freaking out and yeah. saying no. And it is supposed to restart once or twice during the update. I'm starting to, oh, I'm getting tingles. I can't believe you found this. Because yeah, they would have to have a way to update yeah. it offline just in case people yeah. don't have internet. I mean, yeah. Holy crap, if this works, Microsoft is definitely not going to back. make sure that this <laughs> is fixed for the next one. <laughs> well, that, these aren't supposed to even get into our hands. Hold on just a gosh darn second here. Check the firmware. This does not look new. Holy crap, it updated. It totally did, yeah. So, Holy crap. That doesn't guarantee that these are gonna work. Mass Effect, here we go, it boys. Could, it could still need some kind Play of- Play disc. I still think it's gonna need some kind of network handshake and it's gonna say no. Yeah, something Whoa. like that. Same code. Yeah. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. We could still <laughs> shut up. We could still try we could still try one of the earlier ones. Sure. This sh Oh. Yeah. No dice. Okay. Plug it All in. Alright, you know what? Oh yeah, the ten gig one is debug and the other oh, one says retail. Right, 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 so we right. should use the one gig port. Network settings. Current network status, wired, oh, checking service. It's trying to do something. It's trying to do something. It's not working. To be very clear, guys, this is not gonna like perform better or anything. It's just, holy shit. Did F1 2019 just do something? It's trying to. Does it, it say ready to start? It's updating. Now hold on a second. Oh. Something went wrong. Getting your game ready. This might take a minute or two. Holy crap. I think this is doing stuff. We are downloading F1 2019, 61 megabit per second, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there it is. No, this it's banned! banned! from the Xbox network. It's banned! There it is. Yeah. We got the splash screen for Mass Effect to come up, and then it instantly went to ban. Who are you? Something went wrong, give it another try. Yeah, it's it's. We didn't have that tile. It was good. Yeah. 
<laughs> Desk flip. Back to Microsoft it goes. Yep. There's a problem with your Xbox Live profile. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah, it's worked. Nice. Okay. $2,000 paperweight, let's hey. go. Hey. <laughs> well, that's okay. We tried everything. And you know what else is okay? Our sponsor. Humble Bundle. For a limited time, we're partnering with Humble Bundle to bring you the handheld PC Power Bundle. For just 20 bucks, you can get eight great games, including Orcs Must Die 3, MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries, and Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden Deluxe Edition. All of the games in this collection are controller friendly and are Steam Deck verified or playable. Plus, a portion of the proceeds will be donated to Life Lights and the BC Children's Hospital by way of the Children's Miracle Network. So whether you have plans to get a Steam Deck or not, this bundle is the perfect way to get some amazing games and support children in need at the same time. If you're not familiar with Humble, their mission is to support charity while providing awesome content to their community at great prices. Almost all the games, books, software, and digital content that they sell contributes to a charity in need. And when you join Humble Choice, their PC gaming membership, 5% supports their featured charity of the month. So learn more and get the handheld PC power bundle using the link down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, another really cool console video we did a while back was we got our hands on this weird console from China that was the first Windows running PC that we had ever seen that had a similar architecture to the last couple of generations of consoles where the memory was shared between the CPU and the GPU and it used GDDR style memory for a CPU. So I forget what it was even called, but we'll get you guys a link to that. It's a really, really cool video.